Hi everybody, if you're following on with this guide uh, to install Home Assistant with a Solax inverter, this is where we uh, start to download the basic software so you can install it on your hardware. This demonstration is going to be done on uh, a Windows PC um, with VirtualBox and um, Home Assistant. Um, so let's get started. Um, VirtualBox is uh, VM software, VM stands for Virtual Machine, and essentially it's a way of running a computer within a computer. So Home Assistant doesn't actually run on Windows, um, it runs either on its own operating system um, or on, on uh, Linux, but we're running it on Windows. So what we actually need to do is create another computer in Windows, which is a virtual machine, and then run Home Assistant on that. This is the uh, link to download VirtualBox. It's, uh, quite, it's quite a small piece of software. You can see I've gone to the uh, VirtualBox link. All we need to do is, is download it for the host that you're going to be running it on. And I'm going to do it on a Windows host. So I'll click the Windows host link um, to download that. Okay, so we can see it downloading there. Um, it's about 106 megabytes and it's going to be finished in a few seconds. Okay, so that's great. I can I can now take that and I'm just going to um, put them in a really good place like on my desktop right there um, so I can show you what to do next. We're now going to download Home Assistant and uh, and um, that is the Home Assistant installation link for, for downloading the software. So again, if I uh, bring up my Explorer, I've got another window for Home Assistant, uh, which is that link. And I'm going to be doing the Windows version, but as you can see, it can run on all sorts of um, different platforms. Um, I'm going to be using Home Assistant Operating System VM on that one. So that's that's the one that I'm going to download and I want the virtualbox.vdi um, file there. I'll just wait for that to happen. It's a little bit bigger, nearly half a gigabyte there, so it'll take a few seconds longer. Now this uh, VDI file is in a zip file. You'll need to unzip it before it'll work in VirtualBox. Uh, so so um, Windows should do that as a standard functionality. If you're not running Windows, you'll need to uh, make sure that you can unzip it. Okay, and I'm also going to put that on my desktop there. Um, the other tab um, I was made aware of, if you do want to go down the, um, the hardwired Modbus route rather than the Wi-Fi adapter, uh, this is the link to the uh, WaveShare device. Um, it costs under 30 pounds and it is solid as a rock and well worth it, but it does take a bit of technical ability just to wire it up. Um, I've got another video based on wiring the WaveShare and setting that up. It's not included in this series. We're just going to set it up with the standard black Wi-Fi 3 dongle. I'm now going to install the VirtualBox software on my Windows 10 PC. You can also do it on Windows 11. That's absolutely fine. Um, so double click the icon and uh, just go through, um, so it's come up on my other screen, the user account control. And you'll be presented with this um, Oracle installation um, setup wizard. We're going to go next and uh, you're just going to deselect, unless you particularly want it, the um, VirtualBox uh, Python scripting support, because it will require additional software if, if you want to add that. Click next, it'll give a warning about temporarily disconnecting your network interfaces, if that's okay, and then um, just install in the default location. Okay, I'm not going to start the, um, the VirtualBox software at the moment, so I'm just going to untick that and uh, click finish. And there we go, that is the VirtualBox installation done. I'm now going to extract the um, Home Assistant software. Uh, I'm going to extract here. So I'm just right clicking on the icon and click extract here. And hopefully that will put it on my desktop so I don't lose track of it. It's only one file, so it's not gonna fill your desktop full of um, all sorts of junk. And um, there it is, it's the uh, HOS OVA 10.3 um, .vdi file. You now need to uh, put the Home Assistant VDI file in a folder which you create for running Home Assistant. And really that's your choice. I have a, um, a folder where I keep all my VirtualBox VDI files, um, which I'll show you here. 
and I'm just going to uh, create a new folder called uh, Home Assistant with a capital like that and um, in that folder I'm going to uh, take the VDI file from Home Assistant and move it in there. I don't want to copy it because I don't want copies of these big files lying all over the place. So there you can see I can now I now have this uh, D drive which is my SSD. I've got a VirtualBox folder and I've got it inside a Home Assistant folder um, and that's where my Home Assistant operating system is going to be. Go ahead now and launch the Oracle VM VirtualBox software. So double click on the icon on your desktop or wherever it is on your start menu and um, you'll be presented with the main VirtualBox manager window. Um, we're, I've uh, already got some uh, VirtualBox VMs in here, which you won't have. I use it for other purposes. So you're going to uh, click the add new button there. And I want you to make sure that your uh, mode is expert mode. Okay, we don't want guided mode. You want to make sure you click the expert mode button on there. Um, give it a name. So I'm going to call mine Home Assistant, like that. And um, I'm also going to um, put it in the folder that we selected before. So you copied your VDI into this folder. Mine was in D, VirtualBox, Home Assistant. Okay. Um, type, um, the type drop down, you're going to select um, Linux from there. And from the version drop down, you're going to pick other Linux 64 bit from there. Okay, moving on to the next tab. We don't need the um, unattended install. Um, you can go straight to the hardware section. Home Assistant needs uh, two uh, gigabytes of RAM, really as, as a minimum. You can uh, give it a little bit more if you have more. Um, and it's best running off uh, two processors. So I'm just going to move that up to two. And also uh, check the enable the FI special OS's only box. Move on to the uh, hard disk uh, drop down here. So you're going to use an existing hard disk uh, virtual file, uh, which is the one that we've downloaded. Uh, so select the uh, little icon here uh, to browse, and then you'll have this, this uh, browsing window. Click the Add button in the top left corner, um, navigate to the folder that you downloaded the VDI, select the VDI and click Open. Okay, and then you're going to make sure that that's selected and then click Choose. Okay, now you've just got to click finish. And there we have, we have a home assistant uh, virtual machine now on the left hand side and it says it's powered off. Before launching home assistant, you need to uh, just set a few default settings for it starting up. So um, click on the home assistant VDI here on the, on the virtual machine and click the settings icon there. Now, most of these we did during the installation. So, um, if you go to system, for example, you can already see that we've chosen um, 2048 megabytes of memory and you can check that it's got uh, two processors assigned to it um, and that the, um, the AFI special OS's checkbox is checked. Um, if you want to just move down to audio, I want you to change the audio controller to Intel HD audio and then move them down to network and rather than it's being attached to NAT, um, I want you to select a bridge adapter and then make sure that uh, the adapter which is in your computer um, is selected in this box here. And just uh, click OK when you've done that. And that should be everything uh, set up ready to launch. OK, so after all those settings, you're ready to uh, start Home Assistant for the first time. So uh, click on the start button there um, and then just wait for uh, the VM to power up and the Home Assistant OS to start up. Give it a few seconds and it should load the Home Assistant loading window here. So that's starting the virtual machine and uh, it'll start to boot the Home Assistant OS. So if all goes well, you get all these uh, um, things scrolling up with OKs next to them. Um, don't take too much notice of it uh, and just wait till that's finished. Okay, so that's Home Assistant loaded and it's just waiting for the supervisor to finish starting up. And um, 
and there you go that's that's uh that's it finished now what what's important here is the i p address um of home assistant so you can see here it's one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot twenty one okay this is the subnet mask but don't worry about that it's the i p address that's important okay so what we need to do is uh open a browser um so I'll just go back to my browser here and I want you to enter that i p address into your browser with um, colon 8123 on the end of it, which is the default port that uh, Home Assistant resides at. So it's 192.168.1.21 colon 8123. Your IP address scheme might be different, so whatever it is on your Home Assistant screen, you enter. Okay, and you'll be presented with the main Home Assistant screen. Um, all the configuration of Home Assistant is done through a web browser, so wherever you have a web browser, you can configure and use Home Assistant. Um, this is going to take some time. Uh, it says it can take up to 20 minutes there, so I'm going to uh, leave that going and uh, join you again when it's finished. When it's finished configuring, you're presented with the Home Assistant main screen and you'll then need to create a user account. So you can call your user account whatever you want it to be. And uh, type in um, your username and your password and then click create account when you've finished. How I'd like to name my home, right? You need a, a name for your home. You can call it my home assistant, my home, home, anything that you want to call it. Okay. And I'm going to um, pick United Kingdom from the country's drop down list. Um, English GB. Yeah, I'm in zero elevation. Um, not all that bothered. And um, then I want to use the metric system you can choose and the currency is going to be um, GBP for me, wherever that is on here. British pound, there we go. Um, just depends. And uh, when you've done that, click next. Um, you can choose whether you want to contribute to Home Assistant by sharing basic, basic analytics or usage statistics or anything like that. And then um, click next when you're finished. Um, so it's just showing here that the devices and services in Home Assistant are represented as integrations. You can do it now or you can set them up later. Now, what it's actually done is search my house and find things around the house already that it knows it can integrate and um, that you can automate. So it can automatically operate your television. Um, I've got a, a Kodi instance, which you can, you can control through Home Assistant. You can cast to Google devices. Um, I've got a, a TV network streamer and some Sonos, Sonos um, sound speak systems. Um, so it's already detected these, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to click finish. Okay, so that's it. Home Assistant is working and um, it's already picked up the music I've been playing on my uh, um, Sonos system, but essentially that is a blank, blank fresh installation and you're ready to start installing um, the integrations into Home Assistant, which we'll cover in the next video. Um, so there's a little bit of work there, but it really doesn't take all that long. And um, if you've got this far, well done and continue the series um, so that you can uh, complete the process. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.